In my last video, I talked about how the Earth has a better track record of killing life on Earth than space does. Most of the mass extinction events have been threats that were domestic to life on Earth. However, that's probably because humans weren't around yet, because with our current track record, human beings are the heavyweight champions of death, destruction, and forced extinction. I will be using we a lot in this video. However, I do understand that you as a person probably don't want to kill everything. Well, at least I hope you don't. The problem is that humans and groups do a lot of terrible things whether they mean to or not, and the actions of one terrible leader is oft at the behest of the people. This is not always the case, but for the most part humanity kind of sucks, and you can quote me on that. If you don't already know, humans are currently driving over a million different species to extinction. This through various forms of pollution, deforestation, and just generally sucking. We've exploited more than half the planet, and if that doesn't concern you, it should. We could very easily drive ourselves to extinction by exploiting the Earth. The Earth will always live on, but it doesn't mean we will. I don't believe we could destroy all life on Earth. I mean, life, uh... Life, uh, finds a way. But that does not mean human life will always find a way. That being said, I don't think we will ever exploit our planet to the point where we go extinct. We are getting to the point where renewable energies are cheaper and more effective than fossil fuels. And I mean, capitalists love to make as much money as possible. And running out of natural products is not a good way to make money. So I think the good and bad will eventually just come together and form some sort of equilibrium. However, that may not matter because of one rather prominent thing, nuclear weapons. Today, the Cold War is a thing of the past, and most people have no memory of the constant fear of nuclear war weighing on their shoulders. Today, nuclear bunkers are only for eccentric doomsday theorists and not a realistic option like they were 60 years ago. However, the Cold War almost ended with the end of humanity. We have had at least 22 separate occasions where we just barely dodged nuclear war. And one of those times, it was actually caused by a bear. At around midnight on October 25th, 1962, everyone at an Air Force base in Duluth, Minnesota was on edge. It was the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis, and World War III could happen at any moment. Military personnel were trained that right before a missile strike, Russian saboteurs would attempt to disable the United States' warheads. The base in Duluth was carrying nuclear warheads, and so if Russian saboteurs were going to disable some nukes, they would definitely come to this base to do it. So when a guard saw a shadowy figure climbing the fence into the restricted area of the base, he immediately assumed it was the Russians. He panicked and... The firing of his gun meant that the alarm was sounded, but instead of the alarm that merely put the base on high alert, the alert for the jet pilots to scramble and launch an attack was triggered on accident instead. There were no scheduled drills, and so the pilots got into their jets ready to go to war. The planes got out onto the runway, but before they took off, an officer hopped in his jeep, put his foot down real hard on that gas pedal, and managed to flag the pilots down and keep them from taking off. Had the officer not managed this, it would have been the end of all of us. The shadowy figure turned out to just be a curious black bear, and not the Russian kind. Most of the close call stories are like this, but instead of a black bear, it's a flock of birds, or a solar flare, or the moon. Or in the time Boris Yeltsin, the president of Russia, almost fired nukes at the US, it was because a scheduled Norwegian science probe took off that Norway had informed Russia and everyone else about. Nuclear war is usually averted only because of quick thinking and a lot of luck. In most of the stories I've heard before researching for this video, it had always been told to me like Americans were just trying to protect themselves and that the big bad Ruskies were antagonistic and just waiting for the US to act so they could pull the trigger. 
but in reality, both sides were just as ready to pull that trigger. When Nixon was in office, the stresses of the duties of the president sent Nixon into a deep depression. Nixon was unstable, frequently drunk, and made comments to White House staff about ordering nuclear strikes against the Russians. It got so bad that the US Secretary of Defense James R. Schlesinger ordered White House Chiefs of Staff to route any requests from the president for nuclear strikes through Schlesinger first. The Russians were just as afraid of us as we were of them, and it was this fear of mutual annihilation or mutually assured destruction that kept us from going to war at all. But it was also this fear that almost put us over the edge, and honestly, if it wasn't for a couple of Russians, we might not even be here. On October 27, 1962, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, the United States discovered a Russian submarine near Cuba. Despite being in international waters, the United States ships started dropping depth charges in an attempt to bring the submarine up from the depths below. The Soviet submarine had received no contact from Moscow in some time, and the captain of the submarine took the dropping of the depth charges as an act of war, and he wanted to start firing nuclear warheads at the Americans. Vasily Arkhipov, the commodore of the submarine fleet, fervently refused the captain's order to fire the missiles, and an argument broke out. Arkhipov was technically in second in command, but being Commodore, he had some sway over the captain, and Arkhipov had excellent reputation. So eventually, the captain listened to Arkhipov, came to his senses, and ordered the submarine to return to the Soviet Union, without firing any missiles. Vasily Arkhipov saved the world. Over 30 years later, another Russian would save the world. On September 26, 1983, Soviet missile detection systems alerted Lieutenant Colonel Stanislav Petrov of several nuclear missiles on their way from the United States to Moscow. Petrov was supposed to immediately report this up the chain of command so that the Soviets could retaliate against the US. However, Petrov had a feeling that this might be a false alarm, but there was no way to confirm this feeling, and they just had to wait and see. If he was wrong, he could be executed for treason, and Russia would likely be obliterated. Luckily, Petrov was right, and the system mistook the sunlight reflecting off of some clouds as missiles. Stanislav Petrov saved the world. These instances are some of the few we know about, and there could be so many more close calls that the military just hasn't declassified yet. Just because they're events that happened 30 to 40 years ago doesn't mean that they can't happen today. The current tensions between the United States, China, and Russia all run high. The US and Russia still have hair trigger policies, and China is not too far behind. If humans weren't so greedy for power and so motivated to kill each other, we might not even have this problem. But I think humans will always keep killing each other until there's no more humans left. We will always have wars, we will always have discourse, and we will always face the threat of extinction from ourselves. Despite this, I don't think you should worry about it. There are fewer nuclear weapons in the world today than there were in the 1960s, and by a lot. So though nuclear war is far more likely to take us all out than a giant asteroid or a super volcano, it's still unlikely. So you can rest easy. I mean, if we can make it through the Cuban Missile Crisis, I feel like we can make it through anything. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please like this video. And if you want to see more content by me, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post a new video just about every week, so there's plenty of content to choose from. And while you're out and about, you should check out the sponsor of this video, National Realty Group. National Realty Group is a real estate company with offices located in Southern California. They're a one-stop solution office meaning the real estate, mortgage, and escrow departments are located all in the same office. That means you can go through the whole process of buying or selling a house without the hassle of being bounced around to different companies. This makes the whole process a lot easier and a whole lot more enjoyable. Give them a call at 951-684-2600, or if you're like me and you don't like talking to people, visit their website 